Greetings everyone and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread and Scripture Song broadcast for this first day of August 2024 and it's Thursday and welcome to the month of August and it's going to be a good month to get the gospel out and tell people about Jesus and to continue on with the Lord and have a better relationship with him than we did yesterday and uh, keep growing in the faith and learning God's word and all that so let's make this a good month to do that and uh, amen. And if you're not saved, well, today is the day to get saved, and we'll go over that here in a few minutes. And today's topic is titled, Why Spirit-Filled? And why not be spirit-filled? Why would you want to be uh, full of the flesh, <laughs> right? So, better be filled with the Spirit, and serving the Lord, and letting the Spirit work and rule and reign and have control of you and your life. And it's not your life anymore. It belongs to the Lord once you get saved, so... Uh, let's start uh, living more like that and more Christ-like each and every day and until we get up to heaven with the Lord and all that. So we'll go over that here in a little bit uh, for this first day of the month. And um, we have a new uh, scripture song CD that we are going to go over here really quick and go over that in its entirety and stuff before we get into the um, into the scripture song for the day. So. Uh, before we do all that, um, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he too can be your Lord and Savior today if he's not already. And that is the most important thing you can ever do is trust Jesus, believe on him, realize you're a sinner and you're dead in trespasses and sin and on your way to dying and perishing in your sin and spending eternity in hellfire. And God is not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance, and that means turn from what you're trusting in, and turn to God, and believe on His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who can wash away your sin, and wants to wash away your sin, and give you eternal life, that's why He came down to this earth the first time, and died for our sins, and was buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scripture, and He did that for you, and for me, and for everybody else, and wants you to believe on Him, so you can spend eternity with Him, and all that, so... I hope you do that today, and if you're saved, I hope you're continuing on for the Lord, and this broadcast will be a help and a blessing to you in some way, and encouragement to keep you going and edifying to you, so, all right, so let's see here, all right, so let's go ahead and get into the um, the new CD here, and this is the August Scripture Songs, and this is the cover of the CD, it's got, uh, um, I don't know if that's uh, Ocean or a river or lake or whatever that is um but the body of water here with uh, i'm not sure that was taken at with some trees there and a uh, beach and so that's the um the cover there the front of it and so this has 61 verses from the old king james bible by brother dean and sister patty runyon and uh, not all of these scripture songs are written by them some were borrowed from other uh, people with their permission so uh and there's um there is uh how many days there's 31 days of this month also and so at the back of the uh, cd here um, this i'll open it up for you here it uh, shows you the uh, inside cover here and it's got all the the scripture songs in in the cd here uh, so that's uh that and this um then it has the uh, lyrics also in the on the cover uh inside here of this inside uh insert and on the back, um, it gives information of each of the scripture songs. So it says some of the songs on this CD have tunes that have been written by other people. And so it says some tunes have unknown writers. The others are used with permission. So I'll give you some of these um, for uh, this tune here on track number four. Author is unknown. Uh, tune inspired by Victory in Jesus chorus, which is track number five. Uh, tune... Uh, used with permission, that's track number 11, that was used for permission. Track number uh, 2 is uh, by Patty Runyon, Sister Patty, the Lighthouse Baptist Church in Guyana, and we all know the Runyons there. Um, then we have track number 10, uh, this tune was by Norbert uh, Thom, or Tom, T-H-O-M, and he lives in Guyana, Brother Norbert there. And you may not have met him, uh, met him on the very first trip to Guyana uh, that I took. Uh, Brother Mike uh, took me on a, a few trips to Guyana. I uh, went there with him and 
few others. Um, I've been there five times already and hope to go back one day, Lord willing, um, if the Lord allows. So um, that was, I met him on the first uh, trip to Guyana there, and he wrote track number 10. Uh, so track number 16, and the tune was by Brother James W. Knox, uh, pastor of Bible Baptist Church in Deland, Florida. And then at track number 31, a uh, tune by Al uh, Feeble, Feeble Corn. That's F I E B E L K O R N. Uh, and now it's, um, and that's Tano Wanda, New York. T O N A W A N D A. Tano Wanda, New York. And then all music arrangements by Dean and Patty Runyon. And so, and then I'll give you all their information at the end of the broadcast there. So that's the, um, some of the tunes there by other people. So amen. <clears throat> so that's the, some information there about uh, who wrote some of these, uh, these uh, tunes for the month. And again, that's the, the front of the cover there. And then the back here, it shows the back uh, cover there. And it shows all, all of the, um, the covers for each month. And so, amen for that. And now, let's go ahead and get into today's scripture song for this first day of the month of August. August scripture CD, CD number 8. And this is 61 verses. And so, today's verses from Psalm 12, 6 through 7. Let's go ahead and open up the book of Psalms really quick and see who the psalm psalmist is here. I believe it's a psalm of David. And so, let's look at it really quick. Psalm chapter 12. And let's see, so Psalm 12, and there's uh, eight verses here, so let's go ahead and read all eight verses here. This is uh, to the chief musician upon uh, Sh Shimeath, um, a psalm of David, that's S-H-E-M-I-N-I-T-H, -I -I Shimeath, a uh, psalm of David, and it says here in verse 1, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth. For the faithful fail from among the children of men. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips, and the lung, excuse me, and the tongue, excuse me, uh, the Lord shall cut off all flattering lips, and the tongue that speaketh proud things, who have said with our tongue, we will prevail, our lips are our own, who is Lord over us. Um, for the opposition, or excuse me, for the oppression of the poor, for the sighing of the needy, now will I arise, saith the Lord, I will set him in safety from him that puffeth at him. The words of the Lord are true, are pure words. So the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever that's right so amen for that and then verse 8 concludes with this the wicked walk on every side when the vilest men are exalted so that's the entirety of psalm 12 and now let's go ahead and sing the scripture song verse for today from verses 6 and 7 with brother dean and sister patty <clears throat> psalms 12 6 and 7 the, the words, words of the Lord, Lord are, are pure words, words as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. forever. The words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Purified seven times. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth. Purified seven times, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them 
from this generation forever. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever purified seven times. From this generation forever purified seven times. That's right. Praise the Lord for that. And we'll put that back to the days, and we'll probably do that maybe a time or two again, since it's the first one in, for the month. And we'll put that aside for right now and get into today's uh, Baptist Bread topic for this first day of August, Thursday, 2024, titled, Why Spirit-Filled? And we have Ephesians 5.18 for the passage, and it says, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5.18, that's right, so uh, better be filled with the Spirit than be uh, drunk with wine. And so that's Ephesians 5.18. Let's see here. Um, I won't uh, read the whole entirety of Ephesians, but I do encourage you to read it on your own time. Uh, so let's go here really quick to Ephesians chapter 5, just to give you some context here. See if I forget if it's not too lengthy. So let's see. Yep, so we... Um, won't uh, we won't read it today, but I do encourage you to read it in its entirety on your own time there. So we'll stick with the with the topic today, and uh, so today's author is um, T M. That would be the initials for Tom Malone, and he is deceased. Went to be with the Lord. Not sure how long ago it's been since he passed away, um, and he was from Pontiac, Michigan. So let me read you what he wrote uh, today on this topic of why spirit-filled. It says here, and he writes here, Some covet this fullness and power. They say that they might speak in tongues. But we know that when you're speaking in tongues, it's a known language, not some jibber-jabber, babble, uh, yabba-dabba-doo, scooby-doo, stuff like that. So, um, when you're speaking the tongues, it's a known language, and when you speak in that uh, language, you're to have an interpreter and somebody that can translate it into whatever language it is that you're hearing it. So, say it's Spanish and you don't speak Spanish, and you want somebody that uh, speaks your language, might be you're you're, uh, speaking the English language and uh, you don't understand Spanish, you have somebody that uh, can interpret and translate that into the, the other language, so... So that's what um, uh, speaking in tongues um, is all about. Not not some um, some uh, weird uh, um, hibbity bobbity booby boo, you know that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, so that's uh, and people want to say that that they're spirit filled when they do that stuff. But um, when the spirit uh, fills you, it means you're going to preach the word. You're going to tell people about Jesus in the Bible. So. And you can see it all through the book of Acts when Peter spoke and when Paul spoke and they were filled with the Spirit. They were preaching God's word. They, they were speaking God's word. Amen. So that's what um, that was what they were doing when they were filled with the Spirit. And uh, continuing on, it says, Others covet this power that they might be joyful and happy and sometimes very noisy and generous in their amens and hallelujahs. And nothing wrong with, with that, um, praising the Lord and and uh, hearing God's word preached and singing out loud and and Amen and Hallelujahs and all that stuff. Nothing wrong with that. So and being joyful in the Lord. You know, uh, the early church got the job done and were successful in church evangel- evangelism because they were spirit empowered for soul winning. So witnessing, uh, telling people about Jesus. So. And that's what being filled with the Spirit is all about. When you're filled with the Spirit, you're going to go out there and proclaim the gospel, the good news, and uh, amen. And not uh, be speaking in tongues and rolling on the floor and barking like a dog and all that and being uncontrollable because the Spirit is not going to make you do something that's going to uh, be out of uh, your control because he says that we're supposed to be sober and all that. So, And that's certainly not being sober-minded and uh, sober and all that so and the spirit is a gentleman and he's not going to make you do something that's crazy and and all that so got to understand that and amen all right some covered the power of the spirit 
uh, they say in order to heal the sick, right? So, and uh, we know that all that stuff went out in the book of Acts, and at one point uh, Paul couldn't even heal anybody, and so we know that that was a transitional book, and that that stuff is not um, that people don't heal the sick anymore, and and of course you can pray for people that God would heal them, and He is able to heal people as He sees fit to do so, and He is the great physician, but. You're not laying hands on somebody and you know, smacking them on the head and be like, Healed! You're healed! And they fall on the floor and, oh, that's just a bunch of fake nonsense there. Um, you know, some of those fake healers do that. <laughs> Alright, so that's another thing that people tend to cover the power of the Spirit and say they can, uh, say they do that in order to heal the sick. <laughs> and then he says, I believe that God can heal the sick and, and answer the prayer. And I do too. I've seen it seen it throughout uh, my uh, time at Bible Baptist how he's healed many people of their sickness and and uh, brought miracles like that and praise the Lord for it but um, however he mean he might not uh, might not heal you or heal you in a way you, or not fully heal you but uh, he'll use you however he sees fit to do so so and don't get upset if he doesn't heal you and and all that so he says, I believe that God can heal the sick and answer the prayer, but to magnify healing above the healer, the Lord Jesus is not the result of the fullness of the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, you know, people get all excited and they say that the work of the Holy Spirit is something that the Bible does not teach at all. Oh man, uh, here is the most wonderful thing to me about the Holy Spirit in the life of the Christian. Uh, Jesus said, How be it, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he shall not speak of himself, he shall glorify me. John sixteen thirteen through 14 a If you want to know uh, where there is a Christian who is full of the Holy Spirit, find a Christian who is magnifying and exalting and lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? So, that's right. If you want to find a church that is full of the Holy Spirit, Find one that is making Jesus known to sinners who are lost and without God, right? I wouldn't give you a nickel for a so-called spirit-filled life that never won a soul to Christ. Yeah, so that's what being filled with the Spirit is all about. Uh, proclaiming the, uh, the Lord and lifting Him up and going out and telling people about Jesus and what He did for them on the cross and all that. So that's what being spirit-filled is all about. Amen. And if somebody's teaching you some other garbage uh, about it, it's um, absolutely 100% false. So, and uh, so that's the end of that topic. And not trying to be mean or hateful, but um, whatever you've been taught about uh, what being spirit filled is, is, and it's not um, lifting up the Lord or telling people about Jesus. And that's not being filled with the Spirit. And you might have some unclean spirit filling you. So, uh, I'm not saying that. That can happen um, when you're saved, so because the, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, and and no unclean spirit can uh, can uh, get inside of you once you have uh, the Holy Spirit living inside of you. But um, but um, I would check check uh, make sure you're uh, being filled with the Spirit the right way and not the wrong way. <laughs> so all right, and that's the end of that topic. There, good topic. Uh, for today, uh, for the first, and learn more about that. You can uh, learn more about that on your own time. And I know Brother James has uh, sermons on on that uh, topic there um, in his category of um, lessons he's taught um, uh, since he's been a pastor. So you can probably go look those up um, on the church website. I'll give you all that information at the end of the broadcast. So now let's go ahead and get into today's uh, topic for the Daily Strength Volume 2 book, written by Douglas D. Stoffer and Andrew B. Ray. And today is Day 180, Thursday. And this is another one of these uh, uh, topics on uh, love, as we're going through this uh, weekly topic on love um, this week and next week. And this is titled, Giving, the Truest Fruit of Love. So, and whether you're giving uh, money or, or your time or whatever... Uh, we're to give to the work of the Lord, so giving the truest fruit of love. And we have, of course, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then verse 17 continues on, it says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And so on and so forth through the book of John chapter 3. And I encourage you to read all of that in its entirety there about being born again and, and uh, all that. So you can do that in your own time there. And now introductory thoughts. It says, Today's verse is by far the most well-known and beloved verse in all of Scripture, yet it contains a concept that is most often misunderstood and misconstrued by Christians and non-Christians alike. That's right, it sure is. Although society flippantly uses this word love, real biblical love sacrifices, that's right, Christ's love for us demonstrates this truth, and the references are Galatians 2.20 and Ephesians 5.25. Uh, true love costs the person who chooses to love. When an individual loves someone else, his love is best demonstrated by the sacrifices he makes. This holds true concerning God's demonstrated love for the world. God gave his only begotten son to die for the sins of the world. God loved us. Uh, um, God loved, so God gave, right? God loved, so God gave. In like manner, any person who truly loves the Lord will gladly sacrifice in order to manifest that love. So, and that's uh, charity there, love in action. And that's what uh, charity is all about, uh, that word there. And uh, so that was a good introductory thoughts. And now for devotional thoughts for children. Of course, you can apply this to adults in many ways also. So, and take uh, heed whether you're a child or an adult to these things. So for children it says, While David was hiding from Saul in a cave, he longed for a drink of water from a well in Bethlehem. The Philistines had control of the well. Because of their love for David, three mighty men risked their lives to get David a drink. And they don't give the reference for that there, but I'm sure you know the account there how David... um said that he uh something about that they were gonna give their lives for for uh david and that drink and that he um couldn't let that happen so and so that's um a little more about that and now for everyone it says uh, what sacrifices has the lord made to demonstrate his love for you in salvation uh, what has the lord done to manifest his love for you after salvation uh, what do you give to those you love what have you given for the lord in order to demonstrate that you truly love him uh, what would you be willing to give to him hmm. hopefully our entire life but uh, sometimes we tend to say we're going to give everything to jesus and surrender all and then we end up taking it back so and don't really surrender all we surrender, surrender all for a time and then we t tend to take some of it back and say we're not ready to surrender it all really so we need to be careful when we uh, say things like that, that we're really truly keeping our, our uh, word to the Lord and all that. And of course, the Lord knows that we're human and we're, um, we uh, fail at times and we have this flesh to contend with and, so, and all that. So you know, let's uh, make sure when we're saying we're going to serve the Lord fully and all that and we're going to uh, give it all to Him, that we're really doing so <clears throat> and... So, amen. So, that's good devotional thoughts there. And now for prayer thoughts. It says, ask the Lord to help you show the fruit of biblical love. And then the second prayer thought is, thank God for his sacrifice for you in salvation and afterwards. All right? And that would be something to do each and every day and every moment. So, thank you, Lord, for uh, giving yourself for uh, me and uh, going to the cross and afterwards and all that. So, praise God for that. And then the song from the uh, book here is titled Here is Love. So that will be the second uh, hymn for today. And I'll put that aside there. We'll put that ahead to tomorrow. And this first hymn, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to find an instrumental for this one. But I did. So um, I'll probably let you listen to it first. And then we'll try to sing along with it here. So, all right. So let me grab the hymn book here and this one is titled uh, amidst the cheerful bloom of youth and this is hymn 8 
20, and this is one of these uh, Young Saints hymns, a spiritual song, written by Benjamin Benemy, 1717 and 1795 is when he lived. And uh, then we have Sir George T. Smart, who lived from 1776 to 1867. So we'll listen to this one time around and then try to sing along with it. So here we go, let's listen to it first. So... So it's a little challenging, so I'm going to try it, try to sing it one time for you. And if it doesn't work, I'll just read you the, the stanzas here. So here we go. All right. Amidst the cheerful bloom of youth, with ardent zeal pursue the ways of piety and truth, with death and in view. Fair wisdom's path with sweets are strewed, and pleasures all refined. Their joys divine are shed abroad that suit the mortal mind. The most accepted time to love and serve the Lord, a flower presented in its prime, well much delight afford. He'll crown with peace your rising years. Make your fruit increase, will guide you through this veil of tears, and bid your sorrow cease. Give him the morning of your days, and be forever blessed. Is none but those in wisdom's ways enjoy substantial rest. Wait, man, that was a good little hymn there. Uh, we might have to try that again some other time. So let's see the references here. For stanza one, we have First Timothy four twelve and uh, Exodus eleven nine. Stanza two, we have Proverbs twenty four fourteen. In 1 John 1, 4, stanza 3, we have uh, Lamentations 3, 27, and Psalm 144, 12. In stanza 4, we have Psalm 65, 11, and Psalm 73, 24. And then stanza 5, we have Ecclesiastes 12, 1, and Proverbs 12, 28. So that's the end of the first hymn there. And now we're going to go all the way back towards the beginning of the book to hymn 100 so this is hymn 100 in the book and let's go here this is titled here is love so let's close this one and let's close that one here and go back to here is love turn it down just in case there's ads <clears throat> so give it a second there All right, just make sure this starts at the beginning. All right, so this is uh, hymn 100 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book, and there is a lengthy story to this one, so we'll read you the story uh, if you missed it way back when, when you did it the first time. So this is one of these, The Love of God, a spiritual song titled Here's Love, hymn 100, and written by William Rees, that's R-E-E-S, Rees, 1802 to 1883, translated by William Edwards, 1848 to 1929, and then Robert Lowry, 
1826 to 1899, harmonized by Anonymous. So, only stu two stanzas here for this hymn. So, let's uh, get started here. Hopefully, this is the right one. Here's love, vast as an ocean, loving kindness as the flood. When the prince of life our ransom shed for us his precious blood. Who his love will not remember, who can cease to sing his praise, he can never be forgotten. Through heaven, everlasting days. On the mount of crucifixion, fountains open deep and wide. Through the flood gates of God's mercy, flowed a vast and gracious tide. Grace and love, like mighty rivers. Poured incessant from above, and heaven's peace and perfect justice kiss the guilty world in love. Let me all thy love accepting, love thee ever all my days. Let me seek thy kingdom only, and my life be to thy praise. Thou alone shall be my glory, nothing in the world I see. Thou hast cleansed and sanctified me, thou thyself hast set me free. In thy truth thou dost direct me, by thy spirit through thy word. And thy grace my need is meeting, as I trust in thee, my Lord. Of thy fullness thou art pouring, thy great love and power on me. Without measure, full and boundless, drawing out my heart to thee. Amen. All right, so those are some extra stanzas there. I'm not sure why they didn't put those in the book there, but um, those were two extra ones that weren't in the uh, hymn book here. So, um, But I believe those were in um, the one in the other book. I think this is in the other book there, and there was those other, version, um, those other stanzas there. All right, so that was Here is Love. And now let me read you the story here at the bottom of the page. And this is the first part of the story. It says... Uh, the love song of the Welsh revival introduced by a young lady named Miss Anne Davies echoed throughout the schools, churches, and byways as God wrought a mighty work in heart and home. It is said that within the revival meetings, the hymns centered almost wholly upon the divine love manifested in the passion of Christ, and these lines fit the measure so perfectly as to be uh, the most characteristic hymn of the meetings granted for song to be an instrument of use it must be borne upon voices of zeal and hearts of desire we give the following bibli biographical sketch of the revival uh, rooted in such zeal and desire so here's the biographical sketch of that revival here for the second part of the story it says in nearly all the accounts of the revival in wales attention is given to the uh, prominence of singing as a, f a feature we had almost said the feature of the meetings uh, everyone knows that uh, wales is the land of song especially of religious song Lessons in singing are among the very first which are imparted to the young. Apart from the native fondness for song, 
Much of the perfection of the Welsh in music is due to the fact that they keep close to the traditions of the great masters Bach, Handel, uh, Haydn, Mozart, uh, you know, Mozart, uh, uh, one inquired, uh, inquired of Mr. W. T. Stead if the revival might overflow to London. He replied, it depends upon whether you can sing. Uh, Mr. Morgan added, uh, Welsh, uh, Welshmen sing, they sing the words uh, like men who believe them. They abandon themselves to their singing. We sing as though it would not be respectable to be heard by the man next to us. No uh, choir, uh, did I say? It was it was all choir and hymns. I stood and listened in wonder and amazement as the congregation on that night sang hymn after hymn, long hymns sung through without hymn books. So, wow. So, that would be good for us all. Let's sing it out and not hold back and give it our all when we're singing hymns and sing them out to the Lord. Amen. As it stated here and not hold back when we're singing to the Lord and give it our all and do it with our whole heart and all that. So, amen. Good um, story there about that and about this hymn uh, here. So, in hymns in general. And now let me give you the references for the first two stanzas here. And um, let's see. So, stanza one, we have First John 4, 9 through 10 and Acts 3, 14 through 15. Ephesians 2, 11 through 13, and Revelations 4, 8 through 11. And then stanza 2, we have John 19, 34, Hebrews 9, 10, Titus 3, 5 through 7, and Psalm 85, 10. So that's for stanza 1 and 2. And then the other two stanzas that were in the video there um, for the instrumental. All right, so put that back there to tomorrow's. And now let's go ahead and do some uh, prayer cards here. Let me get a drink of water really quick. All right, so <clears throat> all right, so we're gonna do this um, these um, prayer cards here really quick, and then we'll get the scripture song, and we'll do that maybe uh, once or twice more. I can grab all these prayer cards here. So we got uh, four. And a couple of them might have different ones here, so I can't remember which ones um, are the new ones and the old ones, so I'll show you both of them for some of these. So, all right, so this first one is the Homans to the Romans, and so this is their prayer card there. This is the one I have. Not sure if they've updated it since then, but that's their prayer card there, the front of it. And then the back here, that's the back of the prayer card, and it says, Please pray for the Homans to the Romans, ambassadors for Christ to all that be in Rome. And the sending church is Bible Believers Baptist Church at 120 Capshaw Road, Madison, Alabama, 35757. Andy Grant is the pastor there. And then contact info is Jamie and uh, Celia uh, Holman. That's uh, Scylla, uh, um, uh, C-S-I-L-L-A. I apologize for mispronouncing her uh, name there. Um, and they uh, their contact information that's uh castel di uh, uh, leva and that's uh, c a s t e l and then the middle word is di d i and then leva l e v a and that's 326 rome italy 00134 us phone rings in uh, rome and that's 2567122445 and then Rome Direct is 0011-39334-293-4593. And then got this web, uh, web address here, KJB1611AV at netzero.net. So that's their information on the front of their prayer card. And then we have the back here. It says uh, CO from Roma. Um, not sure if I'm saying that right. It says, so must thou bear witness also at Rome, Acts 23, 11. And then another um, scripture here. And for me that utterance may be given unto me, uh, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, 
Ephesians 6.19. And then we have some information about Rome uh, when this prayer card was put out. Maybe more since then. But uh, we have here Rome, capital and largest city in Italy. And the population at this time was 2,873 million in the city. And then 4.2 million in the metro area. And then mission goals are evangelize, establish Italian churches, start an English-speaking church, train locals, print Bibles, gospel tracts, and Bible study literature. So that's their goals there. And then one more passage here at the bottom says, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Romans 1.15. So that's their prayer card there. A lot of information on that one. And then we have here next uh, Joel Haynes family. And let's see. Yeah, this one's the newest one, but I'll show you both of them here. So this is the this is the old one here. And that was the old one, the old prayer card there. And then the back of the old prayer card, just so you have that there. That was the old one. And this is the newer one. Uh, this is the new one here. The children are a little bit older in this one, so I know this is the newer one. So that's that one. And then the back of the new prayer card there. So that's the information there. Haynes family, missionaries to the Navajo Nation since 2009. Joel Haynes, P.O. Box 232, uh, Ganando, uh, Arizona, 86505. And their cell is 928-299-1707. And then we have Joel and uh, Fabi at yahoo.com. And that's the front there. And then we have special dates, all their dates, on the, their dates, um, special dates they have on the back here. And then their sending church is Trinity Baptist Church, 2212 North uh, Davis Drive, Arlington, Texas, 76012. And then that's www.tbctexas.org. Number there is 817-460-7940. Pastor Todd Lassiter. And that's NBM there uh, at the bottom after all that. And then it says, please visit our website to learn more about our ministries, church planting, Ganando Baptist Bible College, NBM Youth Camp, and Native Bible Radio. And then that uh, website is Navajo, um, yeah, Navajo Land Baptist Missions.com. So that's their information there. And then um, we have Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon, um, they're going to be visiting Bible Baptist Church tonight, and uh, they were missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana. This is their old prayer card here, and not sure what they're planning on doing now, um, so uh, that will be uh, to be seen and uh, heard when we get the new prayer letter out, whenever that comes out here soon, hopefully uh, next couple days, and hopefully he'll make an announcement about that tonight and the church uh, service, so that's their information there. And then the back of their prayer card, that's the back of their prayer card there. And it says, Dean and Patty Runyon, missionaries to Guyana, South America. The Wings as Eagles Baptist Mission, established 1992. A missionary evangelist, independent Bible-believing church planting, missions conferences, 30-day missions boot camp, Bible college, missions course, King James Bible memory program, 365 scripture songs, CDs, and Bible games, and that can all be found at www.dailyscripturesongs.com. And that's the front of their prayer card. And in the back here gives some of the repeat information here. There's 12 CDs, 365 songs uh, there on the um, CDs. And then uh, Dean and Patty Runyon, again, their uh, website there. And then we have this information, uh, Dean and uh, Dean at dailyscripturesongs.com. And then we have facebook.com slash Bible music. And then um, I don't believe these cell phones are up to date uh, anymore. These, this is old information, so I won't give you those phone numbers. Um, but uh, again, you can contact them through the website. And it says accountability and support through our home church, which is the Bible Baptist Church. And that's 872 Glenwood Road, Deland, Florida, 32720. And then the website is www dot jameswnox.org so that's their information for them and uh, then we finally have uh, brother James and sister Lillian uh, here this is um, both of their 
uh, prayer cards here. I'm not sure which one's the newest one. I keep forgetting which one's the newer one. Here, I want to say it's uh, I want to say it's this one. That's the newer one. So we'll go off of this one. <clears throat> and uh, so it says here, uh, Brother James and Sister Lillian Knox, uh, Romans 15:30. It says, "Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake and for the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in prayers to God for me." So pray for Brother James, especially now he's been diagnosed with. Uh, uh, cancer and um, they're just waiting for the test to come back and pray that the Lord will touch his body and heal him and he can get through this uh, health issue um, as he's gotten through all the other ones and, you know the Lord's healed him in the past before of all the other health issues he's come um, in contact with and so praise the Lord for that and seeing other uh, men and women in the church get uh, healed of their sicknesses um, uh, from time to time so the Lord can heal people as he sees fit to do so so pray for brother james and sister lillian as they're going through this time of um of um not sure what to do so that's their uh, in front of their prayer card there uh, their picture there and then the back of it gives all the information uh different uh links different places on the church website there and i'll read these off to you so we got the bible baptist church which again is james uh, and then we have Preaching and Bible Studies, youtube.com slash James Knox Sermons. And then the Deland School of the Bible, which is dsbkjv.com. So that's for the school there. And then Recorded Sermons and Book Publishing is store.jameswknox.org. is where you can find all of his recorded sermons and uh, books that are still in print. And then the Preaching Across Radio Broadcast, where he's been going over the book of James uh, right now, um, and then there's video and audio for that, and uh, whatever radio station you might listen to it, uh, that broadcast on, and then Bible conferences and revival meetings, again, you can go to jameswknox.org slash speaking slash schedule, and so that's where you can find that information, and not sure when Brother James will be traveling again, uh, like I said right now, he's dealing with some health issues, so, uh, and then the, uh, um, address for the church again is 872 Glenwood Road, Deland, Florida, 32720. And then Bible Baptist Church at gmail.com to contact them through email. And then the phone number is 386 736 9274. So that's uh, their information there and the church information. And uh, so that's that. And now let's go ahead and do the scripture songs again, or the scripture song, I should say only one today so we'll uh, do this one again and then uh, wrap it up after that <clears throat> so this is again august uh, scripture song cd number eight 61 verses and today is from psalm 12 6 to 7 so oops all right we gotta wait for it to load <clears throat> okay so here we go Psalms 12, 6, and 7. The words, the words of the Lord, Lord are, are pure, pure words, as, as silver tried, tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou, thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from, from this generation, generation forever. forever. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth. Purified seven times, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Purified seven times. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever, purified seven times. This generation forever purified seven times. 
That's right, amen. Praise the Lord for that. All right, so that is it for today's uh, broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song for the second day of the month. And Psalm 33, 6 is the scripture song tomorrow. And we'll look at Psalm 33 and see who the psalmist is. I believe it's another psalm of David. And it says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. So that's tomorrow's scripture song. And then I was noticing here at the bottom of the page, it says, Think about the words as you sing. And it's important to think about the words as we sing these scripture songs. And as we're reading God's word, it's good to think about the words and what we're reading and really understanding it and not just flying through it. And we tend to just uh, fly through the Bible and check off our Bible reading for the day, but we really don't take time to uh, look at the verses and what we're reading and what it's about and who God's talking to and how we can apply it to our lives in practical and spiritual ways and, and what we can learn from, from what we're reading and uh, all that. So we need to really take time to not just read the Bible through in a year, but really study it out and look at it and and uh, understand what is being said there and, and all that and who God's talking to and, and how to live and how not to live and uh, all that stuff. So... It's very important to not just uh, read it, but study it and to get into a good Bible-believing church and hear God's Word uh, preached and taught to you. And uh, so that's right. And <clears throat> Amen. So that's that. And then not just to be a, a hearer of God's Word, but the doer of His Word to live out your life as a Christian should and uh, all that. So that's uh, what the bottom of the page says there. And so that's uh, tomorrow's... Um, a scripture song and then tomorrow's Baptist bread topic for the second of the month for Friday starting a uh, new weekend here and this will be the first official weekend of the month of August and the topic for tomorrow is titled I am happy and are you happy well of course not every moment of the day is going to be a happy moment but we can remain joyful in the Lord and nobody can take our joy away from us we can forfeit it up but um and there are going to be times when uh, we're not going to be happy about something and all that. But the Lord will help us through it. And uh, so, and the passage is from Acts 26.2. And tomorrow's author is C.S. That would be the initials for, I believe that's Chris Staub. And yep, he's the pastor of uh, Silvery Lane Baptist Church in Dearborn Heights, Michigan. So he'll be the author for tomorrow for the second day of August. And that's that uh, there. And then the Daily Strength Volume 2 book. We have two more days left on this topic of love. And then we continue next week on the topic. So this is week number one on love. And then week number two on love. Love continue. Week 27 is the actual week there. So we have uh, tomorrow is day 181 Friday titled Expressions of Love. And we have Proverbs 3.12 which is the passage there. And then for the hymn uh, from the book, it's titled Afflictions, Though They Seem Severe. And I don't remember if that is in the hymn book or not. I don't believe it was. I think we had this hymn uh, a while back. And I don't think I found one, uh, the hymn in the book. So might end up finding a different hymn to substitute that one. So that would be the first hymn, if we can, or the second hymn, I should say, if we can find the uh, instrumental um, or the hymn in the book here. And all that, so... Alright, so let's see. Tomorrow is uh, going to be hymn 821, the first hymn in the book. Another one of these young saint hymns, a spiritual song, titled The Four Rulers. And this is written by Philip P. Bliss. And he's the only um, writer here. And no story for this one, but hopefully you can find an instrumental for this one. And uh, go from there. So that's that. And then the uh, cover here this is the dark blue cover and there's also a uh, lighter bluish grayish cover and then a brown cover for the for those uh, three different covers and there's also a leather bound edition and then this spinal edition I think those two are still available uh, to get I'm not sure I haven't been on the website in a while so you can check that out different uh, formats of the book and so that this one is that type of um, side backing there which would replace this type of uh, side backing if you're not too familiar with that so whichever one you prefer if you want to get a copy of each 
So that's the hymn book there. And then the Daily Strength, Volume 2 book. This is written by Brother Stauffer and Brother Ray. And there's four volumes to this series of books. Uh, good books to have. Devotional books there. And those can be all found on MelodyPublications.com as the website there for those books. And then the Scripture Song book and CDs. Again, I went through that information uh, on the prayer card for Brother Dean and Sister Patty. And again, that website is www.dailyscripturesongs.com. Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's website. And uh, so pray for them. They'll be visiting the Bible Baptist Church tonight. So looking forward to seeing them again. And uh, pray for them and the mission work to continue on over there in uh, Port Kaituma, Guyana. And um, got some exciting news that they're going to be putting in the prayer letter here whenever they um, get to putting it out, and maybe they'll be late making an announcement tonight in uh, the church service, so uh, we'll see what happens there, but um, that's their information. And then the Baptist Bread <clears throat> book here, this is from last month and this month, and if you order now, you'll get the one for September and October, and it's a box of 10, comes here in uh, mail, and you can order that online at baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. And that second website has other books available to order. If you see anything on there you would like to uh, get off of that website, if you check that um, other website out. So that's that information. And then the Bible, the King James Bible, the Word of God. This is the first book we need to be getting into and reading it and studying it and showing thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth and going to God in prayer and seeking his face and asking him to guide you and direct you in all truth as you're uh, learning to live uh, um, more Christ-like each and every day and having a, a good relationship with the Lord and all that. And uh, so that's that uh, uh, book there, the Bible, King James Bible there. And then the other broadcasts I've been doing where I've been reading through Brother James's book of Genesis, part of the Christ Honoring Commentary series. And this is a devotional type of book also, this um, older commentary. And when it gets re-released, it'll be a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse commentary. And so we've come to this first day of August, and we've been continuing on this topic of uh, Jacob wrestling with the Lord. And we come to this topic titled, What is Thy Name? And so um, I was reading this and going over this and did a pre-recording and realized that I, after all this time that I, I was reading through this and, and said that I always thought it was uh, Jacob asking the Lord what his name uh, was and and was corrected um, when I was reading this, and it was actually the Lord asking Jacob what his name was. So then you'll hear more about that when I go through that uh, uh, topic there when I um, upload that onto uh, Facebook and YouTube. So and uh, so I was corrected and all that. So it was actually the Lord asking Jacob what is thy name and not the other way around. And maybe you always thought that too, but um, now I understand that it was the Lord asking. Jacob what uh, his name was and not Jacob asking the Lord what his name was so so uh, the, so that's that was an eye-opener for me <laughs> and uh, amen so all right so that'll be uh, the topic for today from the Genesis book here by brother James and you can find uh, uh, this well not this book but you can uh, get the PDF file for this book and uh, all the other books that Brother James still has in uh, print at www.jameswnox.org. And I know he already gave that website earlier. And you can find sermons and all that on the website there and find out what the church is all about and how we like to go get the gospel out and tell others about Jesus. So uh, a lot about that on there. And uh, so that's where you can get those books there. And then the YouTube channel again is uh, James Knox Sermons YouTube channel. And then if you want to watch these, um, listen to these on um, older ones that um, I've done throughout the year, starting at the beginning. If you missed any of these, you can go to the YouTube channel that um, I do. It's uh, Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting or typing in Baptist Bread Broadcast and look me up that way. And like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when I'm posting these up on the uh, YouTube channel there. Both these, um, the Baptist Bread and then the uh, Book of Genesis um, book series here, uh, these devotionals here, so that's that information, and I believe that is about it for today, so if I missed anything, I'll make sure to try to get to it next time, so thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you until next time, and bye-bye for now.